Hello there and welcome back, it's Damien here once again with another video, this time delving into the photo taking credentials of Samsung's latest flagship, the Galaxy Note 8. With a whole host of new camera technology packed into the sleek, almost bezel-less body, how does this pocket persistent shooter stack up against a proper photo taking piece of tech? Pitting the Note 8 against my preferred Micro Four Thirds camera of choice, the Lumix G7, in the interest of fairness I've kept both cameras in auto mode and opted for the 25mm f1.7 or Micro Four Thirds 50mm equivalent on the Lumix G7. This does result in somewhat zoomed in images from the G7 when compared to the wider angle shots of the Note 8, but it does mimic the f1.7 wide angle lens found in the dual lens camera setup of Samsung's latest flagship. Again, to ensure fairness, this meant moving slightly closer to the scene or object being photographed to provide a fairer and more representative result. I must admit this was a little bit of a pain, but it was necessary to ensure the fairest possible representation of each scene that I took in this video. So to begin, here's a big vibrant shot of a pair of beach binoculars, and as you can see, the Note 8 has produced a punchy, vibrant shot with real visually pleasing level of exposure and colour depth, but they don't quite match the real life colour experience. On the other hand, the DSLR produces a much more colour accurate image, but one that feels washed out and warmer by comparison, producing an image that seems to have a warm camera print feel to it. In terms of sheer visual enjoyment, I think the Note 8 does actually blow the G7 out of the water in this test, with more detail and a richer yellow colour producing a more defined image. Next up is this plaque, and the Note 8 instantly captures the colour and definition within the embossed letters. With perfectly exposed whites, the skyline is a deeper blue than in other days, but in every other aspect the G7 image is seemingly inferior. The stonework is lighter and less defined, with some noise around the edges of the image. The centerpiece plaque was somewhat in between the colours produced by both cameras, but it is much more readable on the Note 8's final image. With the shadows within the brickwork and open door, I think this is a huge win in accuracy for the normally punchy Samsung. Here we have Whitby's famous lighthouse and again we get to see both cameras tackling the harsh whites and direct sunlight. Straight away the Samsung does an impressive job of the exposure on the upper white portion of the lighthouse gantry and the colour accurate representation of the actual scene on the day. The stone column has a warm glow but it's a familiar over blue representation that lets the Note 8 down on the accuracy stakes with the skyline but this does produce a really stunning image that you just want to keep looking at. The Lumix does actually do a better job of the sky colour and the shadows underneath the lighthouse gantry but the overly warm colour representation gives it an almost yellow or burned effect. I personally prefer the colour tone of the G7 as it reminds me very much of an old school Polaroid picture, but for overall quality we have to give this round again to the Note 8. In this next photo we have a clear distinction between how the Note 8 handles whites, with the waves and safety rail all being accurately exposed, but yet again the sky has been dipped into blue once again, which isn't quite how it was on the scene on the day. Here the Note 8 underexposes the cliff face shadows giving a darker and muddier patch right onto the beach below. The green grass is just a shade deeper than it should be, but this doesn't stop this from being a detailed and good representation of the overall picture postcard Whitby seafront. As for the G7, it struggles with the excess sunlight, with the auto exposure crushing the whites of the handrail, which means you lose a little bit of detail and it flattens the intricacies of the metalwork. Looking at this sky, it's almost absolutely spot on, and although it is a little tad washed out, the G7 has fared better at exposing the cliff face and the beach below, allowing you to see the details beneath much better and much clearer than the Note 8. When put side by side, it's instantly clear which image actually looks better, and surprisingly, just on details alone, the Note 8 does a stellar job of handling this lighting condition, with the waves retaining detail and the water being just the right depth of green and blue. Neither's perfect, but I think personally the warmer G7 image is my preferred option. Let's introduce a little bit more colour and see how both fare, and with this next image of a fisheries patrol boat, we can instantly see that the Note 7 has produced a cold, somewhat flat image. It has cut well with the water detail, which looks great, but it has struggled slightly with the background details such as the houses that line the far harbour shoreline, all of which seem a little bit blurry and a little bit muddy. The orange of the patrol boat is a shade or two darker than the actual orange of the light boat itself, but it does an excellent job of capturing the greys accurately in the overcast conditions. Seeing the G7 image, it's clear that the DSLR has done a better job of the major details of the scene, with the Far Harbour having much more detail, whilst the orange of the light boat is much more accurate in terms of colour. The shadows are slightly darker, and we actually do see some crushed blacks under the front of the boat hull. Now when you put them side by side, you can see that the G7 has outdone the Note 8 in almost every single aspect, and I must admit it's a resounding win for the G7 yet again. 
So after a few head-to-head -head rounds, we're already seeing that the Note 8 is a capable shooter, but it struggles somewhat with accurate colour reproduction. So inside the ruins of Whitby Abbey, it's instantly clear here that the grass is far too fluorescent than it should be, and the sky has been thoroughly overexposed, leading to some seriously crushed whites. But on the other hand, the stone is almost perfect, retaining detail and accurate colour reproduction, with no issues with overexposure on the stonework whatsoever. The Note 8 has handled the clay roof in the background exceptionally well too. Back with the G7 we can see that it's perfectly reproduced the grass colour, but there is slightly less detail on the stonework. I must admit overall this is a picture perfect representation of the scene itself though. To be honest there may be slightly less detail, but for me the Panasonic has done a stellar job with this particular setting. So you're going to have to chalk that up to another win for the dedicated DSLR. Just to show you how picturesque Whitby Abbey really is, this wide shot shows just what the Note 8 is capable of given the right settings. Here the exposure is absolutely perfect, with the far portion of the Abbey's brickwork being slightly lighter as the sunlight hits that particular portion, and the front portion being shaded and with softer shadows without losing any detail whatsoever. The sky is pretty perfect, capturing the rain clouds and defined really well, given the poor lighting conditions. It's just a shame that the green of the grass really lets this image down, but it doesn't detract too much from the image itself, and it just shows how good the Note 8 has done in this particular setting. Now we're going to contrast that to the flat image of the G7, where instantly the details are less defined at the front of the Abbey windows. The sky itself is simply a mesh of grey, with little to no cloud definition, but the colour reproduction is pretty spot on. And then when we compare them side by side, you can see just how much better the G7 has fared with the grass itself, but overall the Note 8 with its skyline, image definition and tone make for a much more pleasing image and one that you would be happy to share on any social network. So we've done some wide shots, let's check out the close-up credentials of these two shooters. Instantly we can see with this lobster trap just how well the Note 8 has managed to capture all of the intricate detail of these nets. The wood beams include all the little woodwork detail whilst the ropes look nicely worn, but it has been exposed quite extensively more than the real life scene, meaning although there is detail there, it doesn't look exactly how it would do in real life. Now onto the G7 it just shows how dark the scene it actually was, but it does result in a dingy and black rich image that doesn't look quite as appealing. Instead the image lacks the details that make this an interesting setting, instead of bleached white the frames look yellow and we have a poorer image of truth be told. Now side by side you can instantly see the exposure differences, it's almost like night and day for me, it's an easy winner in this round and that is in favour of the Note 8. So I've covered outdoor scenes and we've covered outdoor lighting, but how does a Note 8 fare with low light photography? Well with this first image it does reasonably well with this mantelpiece, the wood grain is clearly visible, whilst the text on the choose happy sign is nice and legible, but there is a slight cold blue tint to the LED bulbs and the candle, but overall it's nicely exposed considering the light is poor. The G7 is instantly at home with this f1.7 lens in this lighting situation, and clearly you can see just how little light is actually in this scene. Bokeh is handled well and we have a nice warm scene that matches the glow of the candle, but the lamp is a little bit darker than it should be. Here with a side by side comparison you can instantly see the major differences in exposure. The depth of colour in the G7 does put the Note 8 to shame to be quite honest with you, despite how well the Note 8 has handled this low light scenario. It's a cooler image overall, but there is plenty of accurate detail. The only downside is, if anything, it's exposed the scene too much and instead looks washed out when compared to the G7's image. Unfortunately, again, we're going to have to give this round to the DSLR. Now with this picture of the same fireplace, it's been handled much better by the Note 8, with the corners, unlit candles and all the little extras all visible despite the lack of good lighting. The yellow flowers are a little bit lacking in yellow, and the glare from the LEDs in the fireplace gives an image a much brighter central portion. Overall, to be honest with you, I'm impressed with the level of detail without it getting muddy or pixelated, and it's very clear what you're looking at in this particular image. Inversely with the DSLR you can see just how dark and lacking in certain details the scene is. The colours are very accurate with the flowers being absolutely spot on of how I saw them when taking the picture. The LED lights in the fireplace are also well exposed, not too glaring or too bright, whilst the corners do exhibit some muddiness and distinct lack of clarity in the shadowy portions. When compared directly to the Note 8 you can see just how differently each camera handles this low light situation, with the Note 8 producing a detailed image into the corners that although it does lack accuracy it makes up for the details that DSLR is unable to distinguish, mainly due to the vignetting feature of the lens. For the sheer performance and adding those little extras that you maybe wouldn't see in the other image, I'm going to have to give this to the smartphone. So what do you think? Who do you think won? I personally would have to say the DSLR has won this one, but I am very impressed with the quality of the images that the Note 8 can produce. 
it would have been a stretch to imagine that the Note 8 could best a DSLR, but to be honest, the Samsung does run my somewhat older Micro Four Thirds camera to a very close second. For those looking for a main camera as a readily available shooter for everyday photo taking, the Note 8 is not only an excellent option, it's also top of the range smartphone, so you do get the best of two distinct tech ecosystems. So what do you think? Uh, do you, did you have a favourite or was this even a fair test from the outset? Let me know what you thought in the comment section below and whilst you're there drop a like to let me know you've enjoyed this video comparison. If you're new around here give that subscribe button a little press and sign up for notifications to get a ping every single time I upload a new video. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've had making it but until next time I've been Damien and I will speak to you later.